Hi, I'm Michael from Kitchen Cider and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over my top three kitchen design trend aesthetics. These are overall kind of holistic kitchen design trends that I'm seeing creeping into the mainstream more and more, or their design trends and conversation topics I'm having more and more with my clients. There's a little bit of a crossover between the three trends I'm going to talk about today, and they're by no means limited to kitchen designs. These are trends that I'm seeing in interiors in general. But before we start, please do me a favor and hit that like button and consider subscribing for more kitchen design related videos I really do appreciate it right let's get into it the first of my top three kitchen design trend aesthetics is Japandi Japandi has really been trending this year and will definitely continue to gain momentum over the next few years. So what exactly is Japandi and how does it translate to kitchen design? So Japandi, sometimes called Scandinese, uh, is the combination of Japanese and Scandinavian design. Japandi takes its influence and the best bits from both design styles and combines it into the perfect blend of function and form. I like to think that the Japandi style takes the Scandinavian concept of hygge and entwine it with the Japanese notion of wabasabi. So in order to design a Japandi kitchen, there are a few core design elements you need to take into account and be aware of and work with. So some of these core design principles include the use of natural elements, so bringing the outdoors in is a cornerstone for Japandi design. And this could be using natural materials such as wood for your cabinets or shelving, as well as accessorizing with plants to help bring a little bit of nature inside. Keeping things minimal. Keeping things simple is key to a Japandi kitchen. You want to avoid cluttered and messy spaces, but equally you don't just want an empty white box. It's about being thoughtful and considered with the items and colours that you introduced. Everything must have a purpose. However, it doesn't just have to be a functional purpose, it could be an aesthetic one. This could be an item or colour that brings you joy or calm on a day-to-day -day basis. Using contrast, light and dark, modern, traditional, Japandi kitchens are all about contrast. Contrast can add a bit of visual interest without cluttering your space. Just make sure you're mindful of the contrast you create. There's a big difference between intentional contrast and just clashing colours. Introducing some texture. Texture is another important element to a Japandi kitchen. So don't be afraid to introduce some beautiful textures to your walls or worktops or kitchen accessories but just be mindful of how and where you are introducing these textures. As with contrast, you can definitely go a little bit overboard and it can be too much of a good thing. So to quickly sum up the Japandi design trend aesthetic, we have clean and clear design, bringing the outdoors in and using natural materials, keeping things minimal and uncluttered, a focus on intentional and functional items. There's a light, soft, calming, neutral base color palette However, we do have the use of contrast, kind of introducing light and dark or modern and traditional, but don't overdo it. <laughs> and also the introduction of different textures to the room. My next kitchen design trend aesthetic is biophilic design. So biophilic design is another growing trend in home decor and architecture. It is an extension and application of the concept of biophilia. So biophilia refers to humanity's sort of innate need to connect with nature through emotional and, and tactile manners, uh, even while living in this sort of constructed environment. So biophilic design focuses on creating spaces that work for you in a practical and emotional and supportive manner instead of only focusing on the appearance and the aesthetic above all else. So what does biophilic design look like in terms of kitchen design? Well again there are a few core design elements we can use and implement when it comes to kitchen design. Using biomorphic shapes and patterns. So this is the idea of using shapes and patterns that we find in nature and trying to shy away from sharp angles and repeating geometric patterns. So biomorphic design will incorporate softer shapes and patterns with more sort of rounded edges. Introducing some living greenery. So with biomorphic design again it's, it's really incorporating nature and bringing nature inside. So you could just add a few plants into your kitchen and call it a natural design, call it a day, but that sort of misses the mark really when it comes to biomorphic design. It's a bit bigger than that and more about embracing that, that concept more holistically. By having this living greenery it helps to promote that kind 
a healthier, more supportive natural environment within your kitchen. Your greenery will add oxygen to your kitchen while removing CO2 from your general environment. It can be quite calming if you have herbs or fresh vegetables and emitting those sort of soft scents into the room. So having living greenery and plants in your kitchen should not only highlight this natural design, but it should also support your lifestyle through producing fresh ingredients and making you happier sort of day to day including natural light and ventilation. So lots of natural light is really important with biophilic kitchen design. Even if you live in a block of flats or a high rise condo, having a window in the kitchen can be hugely beneficial. Natural sunlight helps to maintain a positive outlook and prevents the invasion of mold and mildew. So the ultimate biophilic kitchen could have a floor to ceiling window that lets in floods of natural light or patio doors that open up at the back to create an indoor outdoor sort of dining eating area that really connects the outdoors with the indoors. Working with natural materials. So again, similar to Japandi, we're introducing natural materials here. So this could be looking for cabinetry, worktops, flooring, whatever it is, but using natural materials. A granite or marble worktop adds that certain depth and charm and movement into your countertop, but also being 100% natural. Using natural colors. So biophilic design really uses and introduces these softer, natural colours, more pastel colours found in nature. We want to avoid these brighter, more man-made colours that we often associate with plastic and acrylic and focus more on those natural colours found in the environment around us. So often it's these softer, lighter or greener colours found in nature that biophilic design uses. So to quickly sum up biophilic kitchen design, we've got natural materials, tactile textures, neutral and natural colour palette, shapes and patterns found in nature, introducing luscious living greenery, beautiful bright natural light and good ventilation, and really just bringing the outside in. And lastly, my third top kitchen trend aesthetic is minimalist kitchen design. So the minimalist kitchen design trend and way of living has been growing over the last few years. Uh, but I think it's really come to life this last year and I can only see it getting more and more popular when it comes to kitchen design. Minimalism and minimalist design, I think can mean slightly different things to different people or circumstances. There's a great quote I like by John Pawson, who's a British architect. And he said, minimalism is not an architecture of self-denial, deprivation or absence. It is defined not by what is not there, but by the rightness of what is there and by the richness with which this is experienced. I like this because I often find that people think that minimalism and minimalist design is basically just having an empty white box um, and just getting rid of everything that you own. But really that's not what it is. You know, really it's about just being intentional. So when we talk about minimalist design in terms of kitchen design, Again, there are a few core design principles that we should try and abide by. Simplicity. Simply put, just keeping things simple. So not overdoing it in terms of what we have in the kitchen or our color scheme in the kitchen, cramming lots of things in the kitchen. So simply what we need and try and avoid that excess. Functionality. I think functionality is probably one of the most important design elements when it comes to minimalist kitchen design. Functionality, I think, really is at the heart of minimalism. It's really placing functionality at the forefront as opposed to you know, the aesthetics and the look. The functionality really has to work above all else. Balance and symmetry. Now, as a kitchen designer, I'm an absolute sucker for symmetry. I, I love symmetry in my kitchen designs. So if you can't achieve that perfect symmetry in your kitchen design, this is where balance comes into play. And it can be a little bit hard to define exactly, but we can use things such as asymmetry to help create that balance, where we may have some tool cabinets on one side of our run, but we don't need or necessarily want tool cabinets at the other, but introducing some maybe tool wall units, although it's not exactly symmetrical perfectly, it does help create balance within the room. And it's not just physical cabinetry that can help with balance. It can be colors and contrasting colors, two-tone kitchens, where we introduce those colors that can also help create balance within the room. Items and furniture need to have a purpose or meaning. So this is another sort of core principle when it comes to minimalism. And it's not always that items have to have a practical purpose, although 
a lot of it is based around that. It could be that an item has a personal meaning, kind of a sentimental meaning, something that brings you happiness. Like that's enough to, to introduce this element into your kitchen. But there has to be a reason why it's there. So it's about thinking whether these items bring a practical purpose or a sentimental meaning or something that brings joy using neutral base colors or a monochromatic theme. So when we talk about minimalist kitchen design, a lot of the time you do imagine a white empty room. And while yes, um, there certainly is that element for a lot of minimalist kitchen design, white kitchens, it doesn't always have to be white. Uh, and I think that's important. Really, it's about using a neutral light tone as a base. So that's your foundation. And then you can introduce little bits of contrast, but it's more about keeping things simple and neutral and calm, maintaining an uncluttered space. So minimalist design, as I'm sure you're aware, and as the name suggests, keeping things to a minimal, so we don't want clutter in the kitchen. So this could be things out on the worktops, like kettles and toasters and microwaves, things like that that catch our eye and, and make the space feel cluttered. So some good ways to help minimize this clutter and reduce the amount of stuff on countertops could be things like a boiling water tap, so that eliminates the kettle. Having a combination microwave up in a cabinet or a microwave in a wall cupboard gets it up off the countertop. Or even having a pantry cupboard that your toaster and coffee machine bits and pieces can go in and you can close the door and hide it away when it's not in use. So it's thinking about these elements in the design process and finding solutions and places for these items earlier on in the design process. And as well as keeping things clutter-free within the kitchen, the minimalist design is also about letting the architecture and the room sort of breathe and speak for itself. Let the room be the focal point, really. So to sum up minimalist kitchen design, we have simplicity, that idea that less is more, functionality, balance and symmetry, items and furniture need to have a purpose or meaning, no superfluous ornamentation or decoration, often has a neutral base colour or monochromatic theme, an uncluttered space, allowing the architecture or single item or view to be the main focal point and really embracing negative space. So there you have it, my top three kitchen design trend aesthetics. Like I said, these are broader, more holistic kitchen design trends. I'm seeing more and more of creeping into conversations with my clients, as well as my kitchen designs, and in the mainstream in general. However, having said all of this, I really do think it's important to remember not to buy into kitchen designs just because it's trending. I think it's really helpful to take inspiration from these different elements and trends, but in the end, the best kitchen design will always be the one that you love the most, whatever that may be. In the end, it's your space, it's your kitchen, it's your money. So the focus should always be on what you love the look of and what brings you joy every time you walk into that kitchen. I think it's very important to remember that. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe got a few ideas for your new kitchen. So all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.